Robert, it's a pleasure to have you here. Pleasure. And Jeff, I, I appreciate you letting us jump in and uh, be part of this conversation. So, uh, the Fit Small Business audience of small business owners um, are interested in how they launch their startups and how they grow their startups into successful businesses. Um, and one of the unique things that I found between both of your stories is that you guys got started with what sounds like a very small amount of money. Barbara, I think you launched your business with like a thousand dollar loan from friends and family to to launch your thousand dollar loan from my boyfriend when I was twenty three. From your boyfriend, okay. Who became my fifty one percent partner, which became important later in the story. Okay. Okay, go ahead. So a thousand dollars, though, most people would say, I, you know, what can I do with that? But that's $1, like ten thousand today, to be fair. Okay. Yeah. And Jeff, you started your uh, company with around a three thousand dollar investment in My some demo. brewing equipment for Hardball Cider. Yeah, that's um, exactly how I started. So, yep. tell me a little bit, um, Barbara. Maybe I'll start with you. Just mm -hmm. how important is it to have the startup capital that you need? What can you do if you don't have a lot of startup uh, capital? Well, first off, uh, you have to have startup capital unless you're offering a service and then you also need startup capital because you're not working for someone else you don't have a paycheck so you need to keep yourself alive right okay um but i think uh there are many the great majority of people out there borrow money when they don't have it from either their credit card or friends and family all right and you might think a credit card on credit starting a business doesn't make sense but i know many many people who succeeded wildly on that um, you have the crowdfunding sites. So it's a great way to start a business only because it's a way to test your theory and get some cash in. Um, and then you have, of course, uh, the on-lending platforms who, if you're qualified and you have great credit, they will lend you money. Like certainly on deck, who is the leader in online lending, uh, certainly uh, support many businesses as they come off the ground. Uh, but the fact of the matter is you're going to need some cash and you better figure a way to get it. And then the second thing is you have to figure out the smartest way to spend the cash wisely. And I could tell you on that, but I, I think I've overstayed my welcome. Go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> no, so uh, yeah. as I was telling you earlier, I started with $3,000 I self-funded from a full-time job. So I think that's one of the ways, you know, to go. I know, Barbara, your story was you were waitressing before you had done yeah. that. So. You know, mine, I grew up on a farm, so there wasn't a lot of money to go around. So you get creative in the way that you find financing. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just more hard work. I and bet it every might dollar take to you longer. is much, much more precious oh, than absolutely. it is to someone who's got a lot of cash. Absolutely. And, it, you know, it was a benefit that I had the full time job, but I understood what that meant as I was trying to start a business on the side while working that time, that job, because it was just a trade off of time then. So I need and I bet you use your time more wisely because you had a crunch on your time too. I'm going to oh. be his like little parrot. In the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, hey. but planning your day and efficiency has been key in what I've been able to do in the last probably 18 months. So I couldn't have worked a full time job and managed a business and tried to grow a business if I wasn't the most efficient in every aspect of my day from the time I got up in the morning till the time I went to bed. So. Jeff, it sounds like at this point you haven't. Um, I, I mean, you, well, you, you have. You you took that three thousand um, dollars. You launched the business. You said, "Hey, I'm finding some success here. I want to move to the next level." And you um, you did reach out originally to traditional financing sources, right? To traditional banking sources. Um, and how, how was that experience? Just saying, uh, okay, you know, I'm going from I, I can do kind of whatever I want to right now, um, when I want to. It's my money. I'm I'm starting the brewery. To now, I have to go seek approval. Can you tell me just a little bit about like what was the application process like? How much time did it divert away from the actual brewing and marketing and sales that you were doing? Yeah, it's actually quite time intensive up front. So there's a lot of paperwork you have to fill out. There's a lot of people and different banks you have to meet with. And so because I was a young farmer, I actually researched some of the programs that were available to me as being a young farmer. Could I get better interest rates going with one bank versus another? Were there programs that I could take advantage of that would um, effectively give me a better upfront um, you know, loan cost so I wasn't paying as many fees upfront? Um, uh, how many hours did you put into a loan application or the collective loan applications to try to get the funding? I'd say it was probably two full days of just making sure that the. Well, guess what? You're efficient because the average is 33 hours, well, only not to get the funding. <laughs> yeah, no. So I. So you're efficient. I, I've experienced the downside of that I've, mm -hmm. I've, in in other parts of my life, but um, but yeah. You, that's, you didn't know about on deck then. 
nothing. I don't know that <laughs> they Maya were. Culpa, Maya Culpa. I don't know they're taking you like they're 20 minutes. <laughs> All right, here's your excuse. Yeah, yeah. 20 minutes, so, you would have had the cash. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so yeah, so I think the loan process up front was was fairly time intensive, and then until you collect all the paperwork and get that submitted. And then, you know, it takes a lot of time on their end too to review it and make sure that you've got everything that they're looking for. Right. I think the difference between online lending, uh, if you're at a credible source like OnDeck, and traditional funding is the traditional funding is looking for a reason to say no. Big difference, whereas online lending is looking for a reason to say yes. No, I really think it's even like on Shark Tank, I find that sometimes the sharks are looking for a reason to go out, which I am when I don't like the person, <laughs> but usually you're looking for a reason to go in, and there's a marked difference in what your actions are going to be based on that attitude. Yeah, and I think the online lending, because I've looked at some of those as well, but they take into account many other factors that traditional lenders don't, mm -hmm. which is really a nice benefit mm -hmm. for someone like me who came out of you know, a full-time job who's now saying, okay, well, I don't have that steady income there. The, a traditional yes. bank wants to see, well, where's this money going to come from that you're going to pay your, yeah. your loan from? Well, guess what? Someone like an on deck is probably going to be a little more amenable to taking the risk with you. If you can show you have some sales, you have, you know, maybe an additional income, but um, but there's growth opportunity there. So if you can lay that story out, they're going to factor those things in a little well, more heavily well, than traditional also banking. Also very much a factor is the credence of your personality, okay. which in my book is everything on dividing the people who succeed and those who don't in their own business. Personality. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. So uh, one of the things that I, um, you, I think you're, you're both uh, uh, about to share is that these businesses are going to grow pretty quickly and you all of a sudden have to, um, well, you're going to have a lot more lenders that are saying, hey, you know, go ahead and borrow money from us. You know, the growth is awesome. The revenues look great. You have a good ROI and we're comfortable with this thing. Um, Which I've heard. Are you from? <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so that's a that that's a that's a great comment. In that, I've heard people say two things. I've heard people say uh, you should borrow as much money as you're able to uh, get your hands on and leverage that. I've also heard people say you should be as frugal as possible with borrowing because that's money you're going to pay back. Um, I'll start with you, Barbara. Do you have some rule of thumb? I think somewhere between the two. I think it depends on the individual and their own attitude toward money. I find that women are too frugal on the money they ask for. I don't hmm. know why that is, but if they really need exactly $35,000 to expand their line or to pay for the inventory on the big store order they just had, they will ask for $35,000. Whereas men, uh, on, I'm not saying as a stereotype always, but they're much uh, more apt to ask for a lot more. I'm thinking, I'll put it in the bank and I'll use it if I need it. Hmm. Okay? Um, so I think it depends upon how you're wired. I think the wise thing to do is to ask for something in between because you always run into opportunity in business you didn't expect around the corner. And it's hard to just go back again. I, I, well, let me let me quickly get me get some more cash here. I think uh, you ask for a little bit more than you actually need. What, what I like about not asking for a lot is you think about those dollars that you spend. The, the least privileged people in the world are children of rich kids that start businesses because it's only an option uh, that they might fail because they always got rich debt back there to support them. And they don't spend their money wisely. I've done business with rich kids. I've done business with poor kids. I put my money on the poor kids every day of the week. Because hmm. it's like, oh God, I killed myself with this 50 cents. <laughs> and they spend it that way. So they're not thrown away at nonsense. And they, they really spend their money very, very smartly, I find. And that is stereotyping and is always true. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you, Jeff, so far, I mean, until later today when you have your one-on-one -on -one with Barbara, um, what's the best piece of business advice that you've received so far um, as you've been starting out? I think to just trust in my own instincts because there's been several occasions where I've had people come to me and say, oh, I want a part of your business. Oh, I want to do this. Oh, I want to do that. And like, could you get me in or, you know, how can I help you? It's like, I'm not saying I don't need the help. I gladly take help advice from others, but really trusting what I think is right and what the right path is for my own business because only I'm the person that's going to be able to define that. Um, I do a lot of reading. I listen to a lot of uh, you know, podcasts or um, webinars 
education, I think, was, has been key in, in learning all those different pieces and viewing the business, you know, as a, as a whole thing. And I'm really the only one that's going to be able to tell me what exactly I need to do. May I ask you, Jeff, what's mm -hmm. your education level? You didn't go to graduate school, right? Um, I have a year of my MBA done. You do already? Uh, yeah. Okay, well, that defeats that theory. Yeah. That was kind of my other theory. <laughs> yeah. No, so I have a year of my MBA done, and then um, I've taken some other courses just outside of you know, my my undergrad degree, but in enology and viticulture, so I could learn further about what I'm doing today as opposed to what I was doing prior to starting this company. Yeah. And Barbara, if you, what's the one piece of advice or the the piece of advice you find yourself giving most often to small business owners that are looking to grow their business? Well, there's a lot that keep repeating themselves. Number one, don't feel sorry for yourself. Don't push the blame on the next guy. You're in charge. And if someone persists in feeling sorry for themselves after that comment, I already write off my money and I don't want to lose it. Because I find that the people who succeed among the many businesses I've invested in versus the ones that don't, is the ones that succeed don't have the ability to feel sorry for themselves. It sounds weird, doesn't it? But it's true. <laughs> it's kind of true. Right? They're missing that common sense gene like, oh, poor me. It's not there. Okay. Uh, the other thing is, um, no, don't hire the public relations company with the $5,000 profit you have to date. <laughs> because the best money spent is directly on things that will directly lead to sales. And PR is nice to have, but that's for the big fancy guys. Don't blow your money on that. Wasted money, right? Mm -hmm. And the other is, no, don't buy the inventory or make the inventory because they say they'll give you an order and wait till the PO comes in. <laughs> and the list goes on. But there are repetitive things that happen. Uh, but the biggest thing that puts entrepreneurs out of business is cash flow. Sadly, the biggest thing, they apply for financing too late when they should have had the funding to see themselves through. And uh, that's the sadness of it all because everybody thinks, I can't get the funding. I can't get the funding. Yes, you can get the funding online through on deck. You can get the funding um, through crowdsourcing sites. Uh, you, can, you can get the funding. But a lot of people think, no, I can't go to my local bank as you did and get the funding. And they're right. They can't, but as many other resources.